So basically redo that bottom pocket. Yeah. Yeah. So if you highlight your last operation, I'm not sure you, you may already know. If you highlight that, then it automatically will put it below that. Okay, right. And you don't have to go and select the manufacturing program. Is it going to have problems because you already have it? Do you have to delete that operation so you can redo it? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. But it should give you what you're just wanting to see what the window says. And yeah, right? just kind of run through the whole thing, see what it's. Right. So, first thing that I usually try to do is remember to make sure to change it from an open pocket to a closed. Oh, you know what? That's good. Yeah. Just do that in the first place. I, I don't do that know at why the end. it defaulted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of pocket is that? It's open. <laughs> yeah. Right. Then grab the inside pad. If you right click it, you can do by bounding faces. Oh, and then you grab all the outside faces? Yeah. Uh, what were you just trying to grab there on the face selection? Well, when you do <coughs> lines, it'll tell you. Uh, continue, I right? I forget what. Yeah, continue until uh, a loop or something along those lines. Apparently, the face. Selection doesn't do that. No, well, I saw you grab the third icon up there. Did you grab that? No, I that's just uh shows you the contours that you picked. Oh, okay. Sometimes I <coughs> uh, sometimes like this bottom is already <coughs> highlighted, uh -huh. so then you can't really see which ones you picked. Okay. It's weird. Pick the top, which in this is actually the yeah, the second the pocket you've already done, the bottom of the pocket you've already right. finished. And then uh, I usually try to make sure I set my tool next half inch in middle. And then I go to the Tool path. Uh, and I believe on this one, I ended up doing inwards spiral morphing. Okay. Because of that island, it was. Yeah, it, it doesn't want to go outward. Yeah, well, and you just kind of have to play around with it, run the tool path, and sometimes the helical works better. Um, it there's really no rhyme or reason to it okay. that I can tell. Um, check the radial. Distance between that, I think that is. One thought of. I usually don't really mess with the macros too much, especially, you know, I'll run it and then if there's problems, then I might start messing with them, but I try to run it how they set it up. I know uh, Hicks likes to run the preview on that window. I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but I like to do the compute tool path and simulate. I think for the most part, it gives you the same result. Yeah, I mean, uh, Hicks is just verifying it before you say okay, but... Once you've said okay, the real way to do it would be simulated, not reopen it. Yeah, and 
um, by doing by doing the preview in that window, it doesn't actually compute the toolpath here, so you still have to do this. Yeah, right. But yeah, because I already had that pocketed out, it's not going to show us right, the material sure. again. So. Um, when you run that pocket, or when you run that thing from start to finish, do you have to highlight them all to get them to run, or do you just click on the machine program to do the simulation? Um, I have not tried doing it just the machine program. I have always done click on that, shift, and highlight all, and then, and then hit, your hit your simulate or play button. But let me try what happened. Yeah, I've tried to click on the machine project to play it and just gives me an error. Yeah, it just kicked me out. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. That's weird. It seemed, it Do you seem, just shift select all of them and play? Because in real life, you're going to set up multiple programs. Well, you may set right. up multiple programs. So you would think, like, well, I just want to run this one program. It just seems like a... It seems like kind of a inefficient way to grab all your 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 processes. It seems right. like you should be able to say, "Run manufacturing program one. Let me see what's in that program." But oh, you got to expand it and highlight everything. It looks like to me, right? Yeah. Well, I just you no. Know, I tried doing part operation, and it did the same thing. Kicked me out. But yeah, you highlight them all, then hit your play button. All right, Jim, thanks. I was missing a step, and uh, sometimes that text not being there for me to see makes it really hard to try and figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's frustrating, too, because it's like I'm just trying to teach people how to do this, and I got a mumbo-jumbo of a mess. <laughs> <laughs> right. <It's> horrible. <sighs> And then even worse, when they have it, I don't know what to do to fix it. I don't know how to get that to work. So. Yeah, it's really weird. I don't know. The only thing I can think of is your screen resolution, if that would have something to do with it. But you, they should be able to make it compensate for that. Yeah, there should be something. Yeah. I mean, it would make sense, like, if every pop-up window I went to was doing that. Then I'd say, well, something's got to be adjusted. But right. it's just this one program. Yeah. All right. Hey, Jim, I recorded that. Um, are you okay if I share that with some of the people that were struggling with that? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you.